In this video presentation for Smoke 2015, we're going to focus on the timeline effects, not just what's available to you, but also the workflow. Going back to look at our trailer that we have for our film, The Place Where You Live, there's a scene where contact lenses are inside the woman's eyes. The concept in the film is, in the future, you'll look at your computers, your entertainment, your communication, everything will be displayed to you with special contacts that you wear. So for example, if I scrub through the trailer for the film, you'll see several parts where she's looking at a heads-up display. This is all because of the fact that she has these contacts that allow her to see the heads-up display. So let's walk through how a shot like this was actually done. All of it was done in the timeline with timeline effects. As I play back and scrub, you can see in our sequence, we already have the live action footage, the close up of the woman's eye edited in. So I'll zoom in on this clip that we have here and I'll use a hotkey to set my in and out points matching this clip. Going over to my media library, I'll start expanding my folders until I find the graphic element called eye interface. A great feature is, let me close this folder for a second. If you didn't know where the graphic was, you could come down to the search engine and just enter the word I, knowing that that is part of the file name that I'm looking for, and click the search button and all the files, all the clips with the word I in it will be displayed for you in the search result. But here is the graphic element that I want to use as the contact lens. I'll quickly set an endpoint for this graphic clip and we have our in and outs set inside of our sequence. So I'll hit the F10 key to create a three point edit. Now we see the graphic element has been edited above our live action footage. So I want to add a 3D compositing tool onto this graphic to composite it, track it, and make it appear that it's inside of her eye. So I'll go to my effects ribbon and I'll choose the action tool. The action tool is a very powerful 3D compositor. And there's many different elements you can access of the action tool directly here in the timeline, such as the axis, which is what's going to control the transformation of this layer. So I can obviously move it in Z space. I can move it X or Y. We can rotate it in 3D space and scale it if we needed to. If I go to the surface properties, I can come in here and start to change the blend mode. Now, I'm very familiar with the smoke or flame blend modes, if you will, and I can choose one of these. But if you're more familiar with the Photoshop blend modes, click on the blend mode option and choose Photoshop. Now you'll see all the Photoshop blend modes. Use these if this makes you feel more comfortable. I'll choose screen as the blend mode. And then I'll take the transparency for this layer and drag this down to about 75 or 80. Now I want to step into the action tool to access everything it offers me to be able to track this element, animate it, and so on. So we're going to choose the editor button, which brings us into the editor. And I have a two view layout right now set up where on this side, I've got my schematic view. And this side is the end result of the action tool. You'll see by default, you always have a camera in the action tool. And when you apply the action tool in the timeline, such as we've done here, you also have a light. If I go to the setup mode and turn on shading, you can see the light is going to affect the layer, which is our graphic element we're using as our contact lens. I'll turn off shading for right now, and I'll just move the light out of the way. We're not going to be taking advantage of the light in this composite. Later on, we will look at the lights in depth. And as I said, you have a default camera. If I want to access that, I can manipulate the camera in 3D space and so on. We'll leave the camera set to its default parameters. Let's select the axis that is applied to this image, just like out in the timeline. Once again, I can rotate it and I can manipulate it all in 3D space. In fact, this flat image that is the contact lens can now be converted to a 3D geometry. So over my surface parameters, I'll change it from reading flat to being extended by cubic. Now I can go into my vertices settings and subdivide my actual object. This allows me to come in here and select a vertice, such as the very center one, and I'll start to manipulate the Z position. Let me rotate this once again so you can see exactly what we're doing. So here I am bending and manipulating this image to match the shape of what a real contact lens would look like. 
I have different control points that I can bend, manipulate, and continue to alter and change in 3D space. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'll undo my rotation for the layer. Now we want to track the layer so it follows the camera movement and her movement in the footage. So with the axis tool selected, I'll step into the tracker. You'll notice by default I get one tracker box, and I'll pick this up and I'll position it somewhere right around the corner point of her eye. Looking at it, you might think there's not enough information for Smoke to be able to pull a good track on this. But the tracker in Smoke is unbelievably powerful. You're going to notice that as it tracks, it even picks up where she blinks her eye, which might be a negative if we don't want that. In all honesty, I don't think it will affect it, but let me show you how you can correct something like this. The track is finished. I'll go to my animation curve editor. I'll turn on a filtering option so that anything that is animated will automatically expand and be shown inside of my curve editor. Then I'll go to my keyframe controls and I'm going to region select all these keyframes. Here you're gonna see several different math operations that we can use to refine and alter our keyframes. I'll choose the simplify option and just start to manipulate it to soften and simplify how many keys we're going to have. Then if I wanna take it further, I can go to where the actual bump, if you will, is taking place and I can region select just those keyframes and delete them and do the same thing for the other area where the eye blinks. Move forward in one more frame, I'll select just this keyframe and I'll delete those. Now if I scrub through, you can see we've got a really nice track following the movement of the eye. Now I wanna save this tracking data because I can repurpose it later if needed. So I'll choose the save button and I'll name this track contact eye. I'll choose save that data is now available to me whenever I'm using a tracker later inside of my shot or during my edit. If I choose return, we step out of our tracker and we're back at the action tool level. You can see our contact lens is following the movement perfectly. Now we want to manipulate the size and the rotation of this graphic. To do that, I'm going to add another axis into my flow. I'm going to connect it in a parent-child relationship. Then I can select that axis, the new one, and I can scale it down, reposition it where I want it to be for this eye. And we can scrub through to see if we like our positioning. Now in this action tool, I could very easily duplicate this element and these axes and then reposition it to be over this eye. But what we also want to do is animate the focal change, the focus change inside the shot from one eye to the other eye. So I'm going to want to have two individual layers in my timeline, one layer for each of the contacts, the left and the right. So let's choose exit to go back out to our timeline. Now my clip with the action tool is still selected. So let's go over to our effects ribbon and let's add a blur tool. Now we want to keyframe the blur amount to match what is happening in the live action clip. So at the first frame, this contact lens should be very blurred. So I'll take the amount for the blur and start to increase it. Right away, we notice that we are blurring everything, not just the contact lens. Well, that's because our blur tool has been applied after the action tool. So it's blurring the end result of the action tool. And that's not what I want. So I'll just pick up my blur tool and drop it before the action tool. Now we can see the blur is only affecting the graphic of the contact lens. So with it selected, I can really blur that out to match the blur of the live action footage. Then we want to scrub forward to where the focus changes from one eye to the other, just about right here. So I'm going to right click and set keyframes for both the height and the width of our blur to maintain the value and then move forward just a couple more frames and we'll bring this down to a value such as 10. We want a little bit of a blur happening, but not nearly as much as happening in the first frames. So that looks great. Now let's duplicate this later and shift the contact lens over for the other eye. So I'll make another copy of this clip with the action and the blur tool and place it on top. Then I'll select the action tool and step into the editor. 
Now I'm going to select the axis that's controlling the position for this and just start to position it so it's going to be over here by this eye. I can use the parameters down below or the manipulator right in the viewport. We can rotate this a little bit if we need to. And I'll scrub through and see how it's working. Okay, this is looking great. Let's now exit this action tool. Let's alter and change the keyframes for this new blur on the top layer. So at the first frame, we want this keyframe to be at the value of 10. Then I'll jump to the next keyframe. And again, I want the value to remain at 10 here. And then we'll move forward to the last keyframe and take that value up to 41 to match the blurring in the live action footage. So as we scrub the clips now, we can see both the contact lenses are following the proper eye. We have the blur switching, changing to match the live action footage. But now we want to take this one step further. I want to animate a mask to follow the blinking of the eyes so that the contact lens are displayed only when they should be. So to do that, I'll select our bottom live action clip and I'll make another copy of that, but I'll drag it above everything else. Then I'll go back to my effects ribbon and I'll add a garbage mask to this top clip. Now I'll go into the editor for the mask and I want to look at the incoming footage. I'll work on this eye first. So I'm going to choose the add option and I'm going to draw my mask around this eye like so. As with most typical mask tools, I can use Bezier handles or control points and fine tune the shape as I need it to be. Now we can look at the actual end result of the mat. First thing I want to do is switch this to be an outside. And I also want to add a little offset, a little softness to this. Let's go back and look at the incoming footage once again. We obviously want the mask to follow the eye again, but instead of tracking this again, let's just load the tracker that we saved earlier. So I go into the tracker. Instead of processing the track again, I'll choose load and select the tracker that we created. Now we're able to repurpose what we did earlier. So now the mask is following the eye perfectly. Now we'll manually animate the mask shape to follow the blinking of the woman's eye. So I'll go to the frame right before she starts to blink her eye and I'm going to choose set key. This is going to set keyframes for all the parameters of my mask. Then I can go forward several frames to where her eye is wide open again, such as here and choose set key again. I'll do the same for the other blink a little later, right here. So right before she blinks her eye, I choose set key. I move forward several frames where the eye is open all the way again, and I choose set key again. Then I'll jump back several frames where the eye is totally closed. And then I'll just animate and manipulate the control points of the mask to follow the eye closing. I'll move forward another frame, and I can adjust the keyframes if needed to make sure I'm following the eye opening. There we go. That looks great. Let's go over here and do this one also. So I move to where the eye is totally closed. She doesn't close her eye nearly as much as she did on the other blink. But let's just drag this down, manipulate these like so. And as I scrub through frame by frame, it looks great. So now I've got my mask matching the blinking of the eye. Now I want to duplicate this mask and reposition it over here. Once again, I'm going to go to a two view layout. I'll set this one to be the schematic view for the mask. And you'll see there's the axis that controls the mask and there's the actual geometry, the mask itself. I want to duplicate it. So I'll make a second copy of it and I can reposition it and I can make some changes to the parameters of the second mask. Now I want to add another axis to this mask to reposition it. So I'll just click add axis, drag it in again to build a parent child relationship. I can reposition its center point to be right in the center of that. And we can take this mask and just move it right over to this eye. I can even rotate it in Z to make sure its position and rotation matches. And as I scrub through, we now have the two masks that I need to composite on the top layer. Taking a look at the end result, you can see that's the mask we're going to use. I'll choose exit. I'll turn on the compositing option for this top layer. And as I scrub through, we can see we just recreated the contact lens effect we saw in the film. I can go to a one view layout and even hit the playback to let this play. 
That's four layers of footage in my timeline with multiple action tools, multiple blur tools, masking tools, tracking, all of that is going on on these four layers and I can play it back without even processing any of it. This is a great example of the new performance enhancements in Smoke 2015. So this is just a small example of the powerful timeline tools that are available to you inside of Smoke 2015.